I guess you need both in a way because uh, mm -hmm. uh, you're a musician yourself, uh, improviser, you know that good improvisation uh, needs the structure, needs the basis, needs the patterns, needs uh, a high quality of how you, how you play your instrument and, and these kind of things. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it doesn't work. Otherwise it's yeah. just crap. Right. And you, you just mentioned this uh, a few minutes before when talking about Christopher Dill. So it's not improvising, it's not just I don't know what to do and I just, and I just do it. Improvising is um, a, a serious job and you have to, to learn and to practice improvisation when you want to improvise. Yeah. And uh, in organizations m nowadays, or, or when we normally speak about the word improvisation, it's like, oh, something didn't work out. Oh, now we have to improvise. Right. But this is not real improvisation. This is just making the best out of the situation because we, we don't know anything else. And we, we just don't know. It's more the try, try and error ring yeah. <laughs> instead of improvisation. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And uh, because of that, because of that, that kind of built-in meaning of improvisation in our culture, um, people tend to uh, invent other kinds of words, like agile, mm -hmm. as a, not a very good attempt, but it's an attempt to open up the follow the, follow the rules and organizational thing. So how could we be more creative or more flexible in organizing but that's only one step you know they uh, it's not the real thing about uh, improvisation so that's yeah. i guess that's the next step and what i'm always afraid of is that we have to re uh, have to invent or create a new term for this because improvisation has such a bad connotation in a way yeah i Yeah, you you know that I'm working in in the musical uh, music thinking framework. I'm working with the with the word agility, and agility has two sides: learning and changing. So exactly what you just <laughs> yeah, said, right. and and agility goes together with jamming, and that's exploring and creating, exactly. and also opening up and also sensing. Yeah. Because sometimes, and this was why I was triggered uh, about the the reactable we talked before. It was without words, and sometimes. My my impression is that we when we don't use words, that we are much more open to connect because when we use words, people try, different people understand different words. For example, agile, and uh, and different people have a different idea what it is, and they never come to 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 the center of this. exactly. Yeah, yeah, I, I I couldn't agree more. Though. So that's so words are sometimes. Uh, words are important. So, like, like for the body, the the skeleton, the bones are important. But without uh, the muscles and uh, the other parts of the the the, uh, the weak parts of the of the body, the body wouldn't function. Absolutely, we experience this when we go to the doctor with something, and they just focus on one part. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So, so that's that's maybe an. Uh, One of the, the most uh, important learnings I had in the last, uh, in the pandemic months, I realized that people are uh, terribly creative in order to cope with this uh, uncertain situation. But once the, the rule thing and the organizing thing uh, comes in, They are really in a, in a very fast going back to the organizing and asking people, well, hmm. could you reorganize this? Could you could you make up rules for this? Uh, who's going to be vaccinated vaccinated first? And these kind of things. So it's all about rules, and it's uh, it's all about yeah. In a way, uh, when you when you, I think rules are important as well. Otherwise, we couldn't drive our car, uh, for instance. But at the same time, rules, if you have only rules, you are close to uh, anger, close to being angry and these kind of things because you, it never fits. 